This is about my brother Leroy, who's three years younger than me, who has now passed on. And when he passed away, I felt bad that he was all by himself. He had a heart attack as he came out of the post office in Mountain View, California, where he lived and worked. Someone called an ambulance, and he was dead on arrival when he got to the hospital. We were in the process of moving him to Folsom to live with Belda and me. He had just spent two weeks with us and had gone home to get some Christmas presents he had bought for some of the family, as Christmas was just a few weeks away. I talked to him the day before, and he said he would come up in two days, as he had a few more things to get. He sounded kind of lonely, so I said, why don't you come sooner? He said he couldn't because he had to go to the Moffett Field base to buy some more presents. Three days later, when we could not get him on the phone, a policeman knocked on the door and informed us of his death and where his body was. The Mountain View police found my name and address in his wallet and called the Folsom police. I have over the years, whenever I think of Leroy, wished I could have done more for him and spent more time with him. I am certain he would have liked that. Now, this poem is for Leroy. He was just three years younger than me. They named the little guy Marvin Leroy. He was frail and kind of small for a boy and was in the hospital several times before he was three. I remember he was slower than most, always having trouble keeping up with his sibs and often tormented and teased by other kids. Brother Chuck and I had many a fight going home from school at night. Picking on Leroy brought out our anger, and we fought anyone, no matter the danger. Leroy did not do well when he went to school, and after three and a half years, Mom took him out. For the rest of his life, he never returned. Alas for him, very little was learned. He grew with Mom's love and care and learned from her right and wrong, and never did he cause anyone trouble. And when he played with the twins and me, he had fun. He got hurt a lot trying to do all the things we did. A broken arm falling from a tree, fell down and broke a tooth while chasing me. Once he fell off the top of the horse barn, cracked his jaw and peeled his head, but he just kept on trying to be like us three. He set bowling pins at the age of 13 while in Colorado and in California too. His hands were quick and his eye was queen, keen. He was later replaced by automatic pins. Then he became a skater in a roller rink and soon became the floor man skating with a, in a roller rink in San Jose, California. Sometime later, he joined me on my fence crew and on Brother Chuck's lumberyard too. He spent his last 21 years of his life at Moffett Field Exchange, mostly at night. While there, he earned many awards for his honesty and for his hard work and customer courtesy. He retired, planned to come live with me, but just before it happened, he died, you see. His 67 long years of living were full of consideration and giving. All his life until he met his fate, Marvin Leroy never learned to hate. He was my little brother. On the back of a postcard I found among his things was written the following words by someone who had known him. In this world of hate you see all around, in this world of hate you see hate all around but it takes a greater person to find the beauty and to find the greatness in oneself or in someone else, even when you are at your lowest. That takes a real heart for Leroy, who has a real heart.
Can I say something else? And I want to thank the cameraman and his crew. Thank you very much.